So what 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 we did? First, we learn how to use the tools. Then we learn how to deal with topography because in topography is doing a lot of stuff. We are, we just we just saw that if we are able to learn topography, we know the processes acting in the topography. We just with some fuzziness. Then we have to, to, to get more from information from other data like temperature, for instance, and rainfall. Usually we measure rainfall and temperature point-wise. So we have, uh, we have one measure here, and let's say may maybe a dense network of measurement. Maybe every, every one of us is an hydrologist, so every one of us is measuring something, temperature and rainfall. Bring is, but now we want to know over there what the, which guess we can do about about the the temperature and the rainfall. So we are uh, we are introducing some techniques about uh, uh, the, uh, about interpolation. Kriging or kriging is one of these techniques. The idea is very simple, in principle. Now we grow in arithmetic, and uh, it will be, but the idea is that if you have n measurements, just n, uh, we do a linear combination, so, so we do a linear model of our measurements, and uh, the measure in an unknown point, in an unmeasured point, an gauge point, it's just a linear combination of our measurement. Through some weights, the lambdas, you say there, uh, and these weights, we, at the present, we don't know how they are, but we have to build those process, uh, th those, those weights. Uh, we can define the error. The error is that our estimate in the point zero, which is where we want to measure, minus minus the true value, the true value, the true actually unknown value. So, how it is if we make the hypothesis that our estimate is like the one over there, we just substitute inside, and this is our, our estimation of the error. Next step is to say, okay, what can I do now to understand more? Ah, uh, but one desiderable thing is that the, the error will be on average zero, meaning which is the error in the error and the, our estimate want to be, let's say, <coughs> unbiased. Biased, unbiased. Unbiased means the error we do, we do it on, on average. In, with our measurement is zero. So we say zero is equal to the expected value, the mean of the difference between our estimate and the true value. We substitute. Now we discovered that there's some reality also hidden there, and so we had a, a, a reveal it all. And uh, because the uh, expectation value is a linear operator, actually, we can write as we, we write on the right side. You are not required to, to remember all the passages that I am doing, but I am illustrating anyway them. And you know that you can find it. I, here I am very, uh, the depth here is to the Kitanidis book, which is introduction to I don't remember, Kriging maybe, or Linear Interpolations. But that's a small book, a very nice small book that I didn't cite here, unfortunately, but that is, I am, uh, I, I am telling it. I get from him. So, our, our thing says, that, okay, this is the expression, this is pure algebra. Uh, so, I can move inside the expectation value. Okay, the expectation value of A in Z, what is what we call the average. 
we call the other M. So we substitute to hit M. What is the average in the point zero, which is unknown? We here we make an uh, we make an hypothesis, meaning uh, we make the hypothesis that in that point the same process is acting as here. So the average of, of the process here is the same of the process there. So in this case, is also n. If this is true, it follows that the sum of, of the lambda is 1. So saying that we want an unbiased estimator, linear, an unbiased linear estimator of, uh, of the quantity, we say that the sum of the weight is equal to 1. And so we know something more about, about the weight. But this is not enough to <laughs> establish what the lambdas are. So we make a second hypothesis. We say, OK, take the square of error. And what we want from the square of error? We want mm -hmm. to, from the square of error to be the minimum possible. But now we are here, our enterprise here is to say what is the square of error. We do the substitution. Now I am showing you in sequence the algebra that you can do at home by yourself. You can do it at home, not like the other one, don't do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little bit tricky in this management because I can I have here minus m and plus m add plus, plus m. Then I collect here. There is some tricky procedure, let's say, that you have to learn. The first guy who did it uh, I think uh, he spent quite a long time to think how to manage this, this algebra thing. It, it took the square, so it get in this way, then again in this way, because it developed the, the square, and so and so and so and so. Okay. And then I to this expression we have, which is quite overwhelming. It is quite overwhelming, so we are not going, we, we have the feeling here that we are not going in any, anywhere if we are not simplifying something. For instance, we, uh, we saw that here we have the expected value of the measure made in one point minus the, the average with the expect, uh, with pro product the, the values measured in another place minus the, 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 the mean. If you <coughs> have some uh, knowledge of statistics, this is the definition of covariance and two-point covariance. So when we find <coughs> the previous <coughs> formula, this, uh, this product, we say that this is a, a covariance. Actu uh, that this is a covariance. Actually, here we have the expected value of zeta, z, z, zeta 0 minus m squared, this is actually the covariance of a measure in the same point, which turns out to be the variance of the process. And here we have another covariance. So we can rewrite our expression like this one. That we are not satisfying enough for certain reasons. We, we can go with covariances. We could stop here in a sense. Well, with the definition of covariances. But uh, uh, for certain reasons, we define another uh, uh, things that a uh, reason that we are explain tomorrow. Uh, we don't want to treat with covariances, but we will define a new uh, quantity that we call variogram, which is the difference of two covariances of those covariances. And uh, so we can rate, uh, uh, write the expected values of the error in function of covariances of variograms gamma, two point variogram. Could be still complicated, seen like that, <laughs> but you still with, I'm not there because this is just a starting point. We have to do 
the calculate the second derivative to put zero to the second derivative and find the, uh, the and find it in the way that is useful for us. So we do all the algebra here. Uh, okay, this is uh, I change the, the notation because it, uh, the absolute value there is always the absolute value, but I wrote differently in different slides. Okay, I am okay. Here you see. Yeah, I, I write like this and the other two <coughs> bars, but it's always the same thing. But the final result, which is the last one here, is that actually is a linear system. It's a linear system that I can write in this uh, uh, very uh, synthetic form, which is gamma, which is a matrix, la big lambda, which is a vector of the unknown, and B, which is a vector of the known terms. A, a, this is a linear system. Oh, well, if it is a linear system, we know how to solve it. This is the first impression. <coughs> it, looks, it looks very complicated in the slide before, but if we look at it in this way, we say this is a linear system. We solve it and we get the weights. So the uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the the fact that the, we expect that the square error is minimum give us a solution of the problem of weights because it allows us to uh, to arrive to a linear system and then solve it and get the weight. So cridging is a solving a linear system, finding the weights that. Uh, that one substituted here give us the measure wherever we want. But there are two th factors that so far I didn't mention, but I'm going to mention. Anyway, what is gamma? Gamma is a matrix like this where the di diagonal is zero in, in variograms term, and the other terms instead are the two points variograms between the, all the points of measurement. Uh, it's, it is symmetric, a symmetric matrix, and then this one here on the other thing. Do we know these terms? Okay, if we have a process measuring different points, uh, we can calculate uh, one realization of this process. If we have two, two, uh, two measurements, we have a second measure, we can do a statistics, yes. We have this matrix with if we have measuring times. Lambda contain the unknowns, that's normal. That in a linear system we have unknowns that we have to solve to each. And then we have the known terms. But let's look at the known terms. There is something something strange here. In the known terms there is a the variogram between the point the point where I have the measurements and the unknown point. I don't have the known term. The known term is actually unknown at this point. So what can I do? <coughs> I can do some hypothesis. Uh, so far, I didn't ever mention space. So far was simply a linear theory <coughs> of interpolation, like many others. Uh, some formulas can be complicated, but no, it's algebra. Algebra goes even without that. You put a, a, a computer in a computer, the computer does, does the algebra for us if, if it is required. Let's say that obviously an, an exaggeration, but the Algebra is there for making automatic some calculations. Now we have to do hypothesis. Now the space comes in somewhat, somewhat because we say that uh, the process is uh, a stochastic process is the same all over the space. So point are uh, uh, I have the same process going on. When I have a stochastic process, you have 
uh, all of you is running the same stochastic process, but there are different ways to run the stochastic processes in different points of, of, uh, of the space. <coughs> uh, maybe you are you hate each other, you are completely uncorrelated. <laughs> she runs the uh, air process, you run your process, you run your process, everyone totally independ in independently. If you have the covariance between two processes or close by persons, covariance zero. In, instead, you can have stochastic process with some covariance. You, you like each other. You were constrained to, be st to stay here to stay here for some days and uh, you start to, to, to know it, uh, you, yourself. So your stochastic process are a little correlated. So they have covariance. We have two degree of freedom, not just the choice the choice of the what which stochastic process is, but also the spatial correlation of of the process. Uh, one hypothesis that we can do here is that uh, of the form of the covariances. And one hypothesis that we can do is that the covariance does depend just on the distance between points. So uh, we obtain a, a, a two effects. One that we have a, a, an assumption over which we can calculate the covariances and the other actually is uh, that uh, that is a strong assumption that uh, every point practica, practically is independent from the others but only the distance between points counts once we know the form of the covariances. And uh, the distance between points is one thing that we can measure from a map. We reduce the reduction of mapping. <laughs> we the, the process we have is we reduce to something we can measure. The distance we can measure on the map. And the covariance, well, if we do this hypothesis first, we can show that the, the variogram can be written in this way if zeta is the stochastic process, process. And we have this one half in front. So in literature, you often say that this is semi variogram code. But we call variogram. Semi variogram, semi -variogram is too long. <coughs> So we need to know how this variogram has to be, but this is an answer that I give you tomorrow, <laughs> how the variogram are. And uh, so uh, our process of uh, knowing and measuring a known point here, how, how, how is? First, we get data from the gauges, different points. Then. Uh, we can build the semi variogram or the variogram between the points that we have. This is an empirical estimation of the of the semi variogram. We will see. You will see a lot of uh, empirical estimation of this thing. This is usually not enough. Uh, people uh, struggled in the last. Uh, 40 years to build models for semi variogram saying, oh, the semi variogram I need to have these uh, this characteristics. So we can use this type of function for fitting a semi variogram. So we take, uh, we take the experimental point, we fit to a, the experimental point a model of semi variogram, which is a new operation that we didn't account before. Building the semi variogram fitting the, a model of the semi-variogram to the, to the semi-variogram. Then with the theoretical model, we are at home because we know the known term of the, no, of the linear equation. Now, the known term is known as soon as we know the distances between the points. <coughs> because the, the missing information in this case was the form of the variogram, but we, now we assume the form of the variogram. The form of meaning, in this case, the uh, a certain class of function depends on parameters that we fit to the, to the data in the point where we have 
the measurements. Well, we don't have the measurement. We just assume to have the same form with the same parameter, and we are just to measure the distance. So there, in the, where there is that chair, we can have the, our results. Then we can solve the system. We can solve the system for different points, for several one million of points, for instance. And uh, we have, in, in the, in the, if you solve for one point, we have a point prediction. If we have, a, in, let's say, 1,000 points of a grid, we have a, a raster prediction of, of a variable. In this case, temperature. Code. This is what we will do in the next day. Obviously, this is tremendously important for us. There should be other methods for doing this stuff. Obviously, yes. In principle, instead of doing a statistical method like this one for measuring temperature, we have to run, a, let's say, a, a meteorological model that forecasts temperature and give us the, the temperature at the same uh, degree of coarseness that, that we need for, uh, for our predictions. But for most of the time, we use statistics we, without forecasting for, we can, I don't know if you can fully believe in material, me, meteorologists or rainfall forecaster or maybe on temperature forecaster, yes. But uh, so we use our method. So in the point, our result is that things like this, uh, where you don't see the blue here, which is uh, simulated, because the blue is completely under the measured. So we have a point of where we actually measure the things. We use uh, the Kriging and we forecast the, te the temperature. In this case, is it is temperature is easy at the, at the end. Temperature, and you see the prediction is very good. We don't have quantificator for that. Or oh, we had a, a raster like this. This is a map of, uh, I don't remember what, I think, Precipitation, <coughs> okay, Precipit right, precipitation blue, temperature red. Okay, so here we have the temperatures of two date in 2008. And I hope that uh, before, I go before the weekend you are able to reproduce these maps, this type of maps with data. Being fully conscious of what you are doing, what you do. So that's the end of the first part of this of this thing.